Why do governments need enterprise architecture? Governments are big, with many departments and jurisdictions. Each has an explicit, legislatively defined purpose, responsibility, and scope. Each department offers a wide range of services to its citizens. These services change frequently as laws and regulations change. These services are delivered through people, processes, and systems to its citizens. They are supported by budgets and should be coordinated across different areas, providers, technologies, and processes. Each department has its own version of data about its citizens, some of which can be shared, some shared with permission, and some not shared. Data must be protected, yet it has to be used effectively to meet the needs of its citizens. In such a complex environment, it's hard for leaders to have visibility into the entire organization. A lack of visibility results in leaders making decisions in silos. For example, the health department might be increasing awareness among the public to get vaccinated. But the transportation department might be cutting down its patient transportation fleet that takes people to the medical centers to get vaccinated in the first place. These contradictory decisions will frustrate the citizen. Unlike businesses that seek growth and profit, governments must focus on things like fairness, freedom, safety, and transparency to ensure that the tax dollars are spent equitably and responsibly. Leaders must evaluate all technology investments, not only for functionality, but also for risks to these criteria. For example, government investments in AI and ML are much more difficult because of ethical considerations about how they collect, save, use, and share personal data about their citizens. Departments may operate independently, yet connect in many ways. If not connected, then a citizen might have to enter the same information multiple times for things like taxes, local services, driver's license, immigration, and a lot more. This can lead to bad citizen experiences. What we need is a mechanism for different departments, each with a high degree of independence, to know what the other is doing to be able to share information where appropriate, yet operate independently. We also need models that reflect in great detail how our government works, so its working can be transparent to the extent possible to its citizens. At the same time, leaders need high-level models to make critical decisions. In the classic story of Blind Men and the Elephant, each person feels a different part of the elephant and comes to a different conclusion. Individually, each person is right, but only if they have a collective view can they leverage the strength of the elephant. So how can they get that collective view? The best way to get the collective view for something inherently complex as the government is through enterprise architecture. EA will help better leverage the power of the government. There are four parts of architecture collectively called enterprise architecture. Each part also has different levels that serve to inform different stakeholders. The business architecture offers a view into how business operates. It catalogs and identifies all the capabilities, the processes and the resources that work together to achieve the business outcomes. The application architecture defines software solutions designed to enable the business. The data architecture identifies the data sources required to support the business and defines how data is stored, managed, and used in information systems. The technology architecture describes the underlying IT infrastructure, including the hardware and software needed to run the business. To be used effectively across a government, this architecture must follow some standards and also be governed so it aligns with the different departments' mission and strategies. The architecture model should reflect the reality. The current state reality will be different from the future states, and the architecture can reflect change over time. 
Now to the level of detail for different stakeholders. Executive leaders need a high level, what we call conceptual architecture, to understand significant risks and opportunities. With that understanding, they should be able to set and communicate future direction, establish priorities, and make strategic investments. Department leaders need what we call contextual architecture to understand and clarify how their departments relate and fit together with other departments. This includes how they own or share responsibility for technology platforms, data, and applications across the enterprise. It may also include how business is conducted across the enterprise. The implementers need what we call tactical architecture to support detailed technology assessment, design, and implementations. Once a framework for architecture is in place, even though it's not fully developed, it can be used as a basis for digital transformation. Fundamentally, transformation for the government is about offering new services to its citizens, sunsetting old services, and modernizing existing ones. These changes manifest themselves in changes to the people, process, and technology, to the data, org structure, capabilities, and much more, all of which can be and must be coordinated well. Enterprise architecture is a critical discipline for change and successful digital transformation because it shows and models the future states before they exist so that the adjustments can be made along the way as the goals and the environment change. If you have an important story about technology and transformation that you would like to share with your stakeholders, we'd love to help you frame and formulate it in a video and a one pager just like this one. If you enjoyed watching this video, please do me a favor, subscribe to my channel and share it with a friend. Sign up on my website to get a one page visual summary of this video. Thanks for watching.